hello everyone in this video we will see how bankers algorithm work so this algorithm actually used for avoiding deadlock and uh, so how this algorithm works this algorithm actually will try to see whether a system is in deadlock state or not so what it will do whenever a process request a number of resources though in order to uh, allocate required number of resources to a particular process first this algorithm will check whether after allocation is there any deadlock state possible or not so here uh, this algorithm require declaration of maximum number of resources required by process so here we are considering that uh, the types of resources are three so these actually two matrices which we are shown in this slide so we are taking total five processes and uh, we are having three types of resources so first type of resources total we are having 10 second type of resources we are having five and third type of resources we are having seven so this maximum matrix this matrix actually showing that process p0 need seven instance of resource r1 and five instance of resource r2 and three instance of resource r3 so these are the maximum number of resources required by these process and this allocation matrix this matrix actually will represent how many resources already allotted to the process so let's say if, if we consider for process p0 so p0 is not having any r1 type of resource it is having only one resource of r2 type and total it require 7 of r1 5 of r2 3 of r3 and one is already allotted to p0 so we can say it need 7 r1 type of resources 4 r2 type of resources and 3 r3 type of resources so we are going to see how bankers algorithm works with help of an uh, diagram so we are actually representing our resources with different colors so red is actually this color actually we are showing r1 type of resource green color we are using to represent r2 type of resources and this violet we are using to represent r3 types of resources <coughs> sorry so here so at a particular time so these are the two matrices we which given in the beginning and uh, here we have shown that we are having total five process and this is the current allocation so if we go for this current allocation we are saying that process p0 is actually having one instance of resource r2 so it means one instance of resource r2 is allotted to process p0 so we can say like this one so if this resource is allotted to here total uh, we left those resources actually will be decreased from the total so we will calculate that thing at the end so here we are saying process p1 is having two type of uh, sorry two resource of type r1 so these two resources allotted to p1 p2 is having three of r1 two of r3 so we are showing like this one and p3 is having two of r1 one of r2 and one of r3 and p4 is having two of r3 so after this current allocation initially we were having total 10 5 7 but uh, out of these total resources some resources allotted to these processes this is the current allocation so what we are left with we are having three instance of resource r1 three instance of resource r2 and two instance of resource r3 so we can say this is the available resources 3 3 2 so if you want to calculate this one you can calculate uh, what you have to do in total so this is 10 is actually representing r1 type of resource so from this one decrease total number of r1 allotted to process 
so p0 is not having any r1 type of resource p1 is having 2 p2 is having 3 so total 5 p3 is having 2 total 7 so 7 resources are allotted out of 10 so we are left with 3 so same you can do with these two as well so here what we have shown uh, we have shown here that the maximum need for process p0 is 753 out of them one resource is already allotted so what it need it need 743 so these above are what is the current need of these process so if we look at p1 so p1 maximum requirement 3 r1 2 r2 2 r3 and this one is already having two resources of r1 so it need one r1 two r2 two r3 so what you have to do you have to uh, subtract allotted resources from maximum and it will give you what number of resources now required so this is the current scenario this n is representing how many more resources are required to these process in order to complete their execution so p0 needs 743 p1 need 122 p2 need 600 p3 need 011 and p4 need 431 <coughs> sorry now what we are having in our hand we are having 3 3 2 so this resource cannot satisfy requirement of p0 and uh, it cannot uh, satisfy requirement of p4 not for p2 so the available resources can satisfy a request for p1 or p3 so let's say we are going for p1 so here we will write to which process we are allocating our resources so first we have given our resources to p1 so p1 actually was needing one of r1 two of r2 and two of r3 so now after allocating all these resources we are left with two resource of r1 one resource of r2 and there is no resource available for r3 so now process p1 is actually having all of its resources so now p1 will complete its execution when this execution is done it will release all of the resources so after releasing total we are having 5 3 2 now this number can satisfy requirement 0 1 1 or 4 3 1 so let's say we are going for p3 so we will write process number here so this p3 actually required 0 of r1 1 of r2 1 of r3 so 1 of r2 1 of r3 will be allotted to process p3 and we are left with 5 r1 2 r2 1 r3 so p3 also will do complete its execution and when it completes its execution it will release all of its resources so as you can see process p3 is having two of r1 so those will be released and after releasing we will be having seven of r1 2 r2 after releasing total we will be having 4 r2 and 2 of r3 type so after releasing we will be having 3 so this scenario will like this one so now we are having available 7 4 3 and this number can satisfy requirement 7 4 3 this one or 6 0 0 this one or 4 3 1 this one so let's say we are going for p2 so we have written process number here that we have given resources to p2 now p2 process will be having all of its resources so current scenario will be like this one we will be having one four three in our hand all required resources will be allocated to process p2 it will complete its execution and after execution it will release the resources so now total we are having 10 4 5 and we can successfully satisfy requirement of p4 or p0 so let's say we are going for p4 we will write here p4 and then we will allocate our resources to p0 so uh, if we allocate our resources in this sequence so we can satisfy requirement of 
every process. So this sequence is actually known as safe sequence. And if there is a safe sequence, it means system is not in a deadlock state. So banker's algorithm, we will see what we are having in our hand and those available number of resource if can satisfy requirement of all process in a particular sequence then there is a no problem so this is the way bankers algorithm works thank you very much for watching